All right. Hi, guys. We're going to now look at uh, the other examples for force normal, okay? And so we want to start off with taking a quick moment to look at our formula sheet. So your first nine weeks formula sheet. Down in this bottom corner, there's this diagram of an incline with these arrows on it. So we need to be able to draw these arrows. So that's going to be our first lesson today is going and looking at how we draw force normal and these forces on an incline. There's also a little bit different labeling that we use in this diagram, so we want to clarify how this diagram should look like ours. Uh, so if you take a moment to find your uh, formula sheet, we'll come back and look at these uh, forces in a few minutes. Also, if you take a moment, look up here at the top, Newton's first law, uh, laws of motion formula. So we got our Newton's second law, we got our weight formula, and we got a net force formula that we'll be using, okay? So let's start off with how we draw this incline. So force normal, there's a couple different situations for force normal. So start off with force normal is the reaction to weight. That's the way I like to think of it. It's the reaction to a weight. So if you have a table and we have some objects sitting on this table, okay, then we know that there is weight pulling down. We can't get away from that force. There's weight. So there's another force acting right here, right? There's got to be something else going up, and that is the table acts on the box. The table acts on the box, and it is actually pushing up. Well, how much force does the table push with? It pushes with what we call the normal force, or in this case, equal to the weight. So this vector is force normal, and it's often just called the normal force. So if we have zero degrees incline or horizontal, you have a horizontal surface, then force normal equals the weight of the object. How do we get the weight? The weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so that's our first case. And of course, now we could stack objects on this, which means the force normal would go higher. It would be the weight of both boxes. Or we could tie a rope to this object somehow, and then have the rope pulling up. So pull up on this rope, force normal would then go down. Okay, But we start with this idea. Zero degrees horizontal, the force normal equals the weight, which equals the mass times gravity. So in our second example, we're now going to put this on an incline. So what if it is uh, the angle is you know some number greater than zero degrees so the angle is some number greater than zero so we have our surface all right and it has some angle theta whatever that is and now there's a box sitting on this ramp now how much force does the box exert on the ramp well the box exerts some force on the ramp due to its weight. Okay, so the weight of the box pulls straight down, that is mass times gravity. So if you think about here, we tried to demonstrate this in our lecture video, hope you looked at it, is that if you have something sitting on an incline, it starts to slide. All right guys, let's take into consideration when we have an angle that's some number greater than zero. So we know that the weight is pulling the box down, but remember, not only is it pulling it into the surface, some of that weight is actually pulling it down the ramp. So some parts of the weight or gravity makes it roll down, and this is called force parallel. And we simply draw those little parallel lines. So let's go over here and write a definition. Force parallel is the portion of gravity that pulls down the ramp. 
So I think you agree, this box would slide down the ramp because gravity is pulling it down the ramp. Now, not only does gravity pull it down the ramp, it also pulls it into the ramp. So sum of the weight pulls it into. This vector is called force perpendicular, and we label that little parallel, uh, excuse me, perpendicular symbol there. So force perpendicular, as we define, is the portion of gravity that pulls into the ramp. So sum of gravity is pulling it into the ramp, and sum of gravity is pulling it down the ramp. A better word than portion would probably be the component the component of gravity. So that makes me think about this, guys. How do you solve for components? That's right, sine and cosine. So one of these vectors is the sine and one is the cosine. So if we take this parallel vector and see it's connected tail to tail here, let's move it so that it's connected head to tail down here. And of course, it's still parallel to its original placement. All right, so now we know theta is this interior angle here. So we won't go through all the geometric proof of similar triangles and parallel lines and intersecting lines, but that is this angle here. So if theta is here, then we know this theta. So we now know the hypotenuse or the weight of the triangle. So the parallel leg is now the opposite leg. And the opposite leg is the trig function sine. So force parallel equals the sine of theta times the weight of that box that's on the ramp. And don't forget, weight is mass times gravity. All right, so if we look at our other component, perpendicular, it becomes the adjacent leg. It is the leg next to theta. And the adjacent leg, when you have the hypotenuse, is the cosine function. So force perpendicular is the cosine component so cosine theta times the weight, all right? So now we know those two components, and we know how to solve for them. There's a couple other vectors we want to add to this before we make another note on our formula sheet. If the box is sliding down the ramp, there's another force acting against that, and that force is called, that's right, force of friction. But remember, we started all of this talking about force normal. So how much force does the ramp push on the box with? That is our very important force that we're trying to look at right now, and that is force normal. So force normal oh, is right here. Okay. And I think you could see, what does force normal equal? Force normal equals the force perpendicular. So when you have an angle, some number greater than zero, force normal equals force perpendicular. And force perpendicular equals the cosine component of the weight. Okay? So when you're on a horizontal surface, force normal is the weight. When you're on some angle, force normal is a component of the weight, and we call that component force perpendicular. Now, you'll also notice that the force of friction could be equal to the force parallel, and that's true when we're at net force zero or constant velocity. And we'll look at some examples of that later. For now, you need to be able to recreate this whole diagram showing force perpendicular, force parallel, weight, and force normal. So this diagram that I have drawn, you'll want to be able to recreate it. So let's go back and look at our note sheet and see how it's different. So you see we have force normal label. We have force of friction label. These forces we don't have fully labeled. So let's go back and add that and make sure we're clear. So this force down here is the same as this force up here, and it would be called 
force parallel is the applied force due to gravity. So remember, it's the component of gravity that's pulling it down the ramp. Gravity's trying to make it slide. Okay? So the other force is here. And this is force perpendicular, which is equal and opposite to force normal in this case. Now, again, let's look at our formulas, because the formula I just gave you was cosine theta times weight. And then when you look at this, you see F of G cosine theta. Well, F of G is the force of gravity or the weight of an object times the cosine theta. So, again, diagram you need to be able to draw. The one on our formula sheet to give you hints is a little different, so you want to clean up those and make sure you understand the slight variations in notations.